Hello and welcome to International Ideas session on budgeting and financing of elections. My name is Erik Asplund um, and today I have uh, Siad Alahotsik with me uh, here at International Idea. Uh, Siad, uh, please describe why electoral risk management uh, is an important uh, element in both strategic and uh, operational planning. Mm -hmm. Um, hello, Eric, and uh, hello to viewers. Um, indeed, uh, that is that is an important question that we should start asking ourselves more and more. Um, as you well know, elections are very complex undertakings, and many things can go wrong. And uh, risk management systems are methodologies that can be deployed by electoral management bodies to make sure that they are less, expo less exposed to uh, these risks if they materialize. Now, uh, risks can be of different nature. Uh, they may be technical or they may be political, they may be uh, legal, security, reputational and so on. And it is therefore critical for election management body to uh, understand to start looking into these risks already during the uh, phase of operational planning because that will not only inform the quality of the planning processes but will also help establishing system which will uh, be able to uh, monitor, analyze and assess risks in order for election management body to initiate timely and effective prevention and mitigation action. Thank you, Seard. Um, based on your experience, uh, what approaches do election management bodies have in terms of institutionalizing uh, risk management? Um, yeah, we have asked ourselves the same questions a few years back, and in 2014 we have developed a global survey which has covered only 87 countries, uh, but we have learned that most election management bodies did not so far dedicate sufficient attention to, to, election, uh, to uh, uh, systematic risk management. And uh, some of them do not have any such systems in place. However, those which do have such systems take two different approaches. One approach is uh, to have to put specific measures in place to prevent specific risks. And these processes are done very often in isolation from one another. While some electoral management bodies are trying to address this problem holistically. So therefore, in our policy paper on this topic, we have distinguished between um, uh, uh, incremental approaches where election management bodies are slowly building on their risk management system and comprehensive approaches where, uh, where policy uh, makers at the election management body understand importance of this system and initiate reform uh, so that risk management covers all aspects of their work. Thank you. Um, maybe you can provide some examples of uh, countries that have taken an incremental or comprehensive approach to electoral risk management. Yeah. Uh, indeed, um, we have been able to see, to see uh, from this survey, but also from our experiences with working in, in, uh, with election management bodies around the world, how both uh, uh, approaches function. And uh, for example, we have seen uh, that uh, incremental approach is working its way in countries such as Nepal and uh, Nigeria where uh, risk management was adopted with a specific purpose to prevent and mitigate security risks but then election management bodies have understood the value of this uh, methodology in uh, monitoring and addressing other risks to electoral processes. Uh, there are some countries which do have comprehensive uh, risk management systems. Uh, we have seen experiences, for example, from Canada and Australia. Uh, but more recently, um, we have also uh, been in position to, to um, uh, coordinate and, and to learn from Election Commission of India that have initiated comprehensive uh, risk management system there <clears throat> and uh, 
may be interesting uh, uh, to mention that, that in this process they have identified 191 risk that is faced by, by the bioelectoral administrators when, when implementing these processes. Thank you. Um, now, what impact does the adoption or the institutionalization of electoral, electoral risk management have on the election management body's budget, do you think? Uh, although it is hard to see very initially uh, uh, the, the, the positive impacts, but I would say that um, uh, introduction of risk management does initially require resources, meaning staff and some funds. But this should not be ever seen as a cost, but more as investment, because a well-functioning risk management system is the best uh, tool that election management bodies can adopt to make sure that what they are investing in other phases and events of the electoral cycle are well protected. And uh, how is the adoption of risk management in elections financed, do you think? Uh, what we are seeing is, is actually that risk management is finding its way more and more into bureaucratic organizations. Uh, looking in, in the distance, we have seen how some sectors, such as uh, banking sector, medical sector, security sector, have understood the benefits of systematic risk management, and it has been standardized there. Now there are more and more governmental agencies and ministries which are institutionalizing risk management because that's the governmental standard. So. In, in my view, uh, um, uh, funds and, and financing of, of introduction of risk management within an organization is something that needs to be part of the budget as any other activity. Thank you very much, Syed, and um, thank you for watching.